Good Thursday morning, everyone. I got some new important information as far as the snowstorm goes that develops on Monday night into Tuesday, followed by maybe another winter storm for Wednesday night into Thursday for portions of the Midwest and the Northeast. And then I'm going to give you the latest update on this serious Arctic outbreak that is still expected on Sunday, lasting through all of next week. Okay, so here's a look at the very latest 0Z ECMWF model, the Euro model for Saturday morning, January the 18th, 2025. And what you're looking at here is basically a simulated forecast of what ends up happening. And we can see right up in here, across the Great Lakes, the upper Midwest, like Indiana and the Ohio Valley, you could get some light to moderate snowfall for your Saturday morning. But areas to the south here, like Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee are likely to get some light to moderate rainfall with this first winter storm as it moves its way through. Not enough cold air associated with that to bring you any snow. But interestingly enough, this is not really going to bring a whole lot of snow for the northeast other than some lake effect snow areas that get the enhancement off the lake there with additional snowfall accumulation. But interestingly enough, by the time we go in to Sunday night into Monday. Let's fast forward that. You can see there is going to be a reinforcement of moisture here for the Northeast. And so, yeah, waking up in the morning on Monday, you might be waking up to a little bit of snowfall. We're not talking a whole lot of accumulation here, probably on the order of about an inch, maybe up to two inches in the heaviest snow prone areas. But yeah, it's something to consider here, considering that this is a densely populated area, downtown New York, Long Island, if you're in Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Nantucket, Cape Cod area, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, where my sister lives, yes, you can get a little bit of snow flurries out of this, but nothing too substantial like we were thinking in the last couple of days when the models went a little crazy on that. Actually, just this yesterday morning, they were going a little bit more aggressive. Now, our attention really turns to this winter storm right here. This is for Monday afternoon into Tuesday. There's a lot of uncertainty now with the models. The GFS has not been showing much at all over the last few model runs, and it seems like now the European model is slowly, gradually trending in that direction, interestingly. Now, it's not to say that, oh, we are not going to see a winter storm at all. I would still use this with caution since this is over five days out. But it is interesting that the European model is trending towards a GFS, especially on this latest run, showing only light snowfall accumulations for, say, if you are in Louisiana, southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, Houston, Texas, Corpus Christi, Texas, that's where you have the best chances of seeing any snow out of this winter storm. And here's a closer zoom in view here. Let's take a look at the south central sector. You can see where that snow is actually going to be. And that's really all that winter storm brings comparably versus our 18Z model run was a lot more aggressive showing an ice storm, heavier snowfall, and then even the 12Z run was pretty aggressive as well. So it is interesting that this model now has barely anything other than maybe one to three inches of snow for the deep south. But nonetheless, that's that. That's what the 0Z shows. But now we are adding another winter storm to the mix, keeping this a multiple snowstorm threat over the next seven days. And what I mean by that, by Thursday next week, we could be looking at another winter storm here for the Midwest and then eventually getting into the Northeast. But this is very far out. This is in fantasy land, 210 hours out for January 24th. Now, even so the European deterministic forecast is not showing hardly anything, the ensemble is still showing something especially for the deep south and for the southeast. So don't write home about this that, oh, we are not going to get a winter storm now after all. No ice storm, no snowstorm. No. 
That's only one model run from the Euro, and we will have to wait to see what the 12Z and the 06Z Euro model um, deterministic runs show. Does it trend further north again? We will have to wait and see, but this is showing us still that there is a decent chance that a storm does develop down here across the deep south, the southeast, and the eastern seaboard. Yeah, anything here where you have um, precipitation or QPF amounts is showing us that there is a risk here of snow, some freezing rain, and icy conditions. Even so, our latest 0Z run doesn't show much at all. Now, what does a GFS model show? Well, pretty much similar to the European model, showing that first snowstorm like we've been talking about. I've been trying to cover this as well as possible. That goes into the northeast by Saturday afternoon into the evening hours and then moves out of the area by Sunday morning, leaving pretty much most areas dry. Although lake effect snow is going to be the issue, okay? I don't want to ignore you all up here in the Great Lakes. Even so, other people are not seeing hardly anything. Your localized area, if you're prone to lake effect snow, could get decent accumulations throughout the next several days because of this Arctic air mass that's going to overspread these Great Lake waters. Now, by Sunday afternoon, similar to the European model, the, G, uh, the GFS, the operational model, is also showing this clipper system. But although it is further south than what the European model showed, it is still indicating something. So like Cape Cod, as well as Nantucket, Massachusetts, and areas like, say, New Jersey, not southern New Jersey, Maryland, as well as Delaware, could get maybe one to four inches of snowfall out of this, according to the GFS. Not a whole lot of accumulation, but it is something to consider since you all are loving the snow or wanting the snow terribly bad. I've seen the recent comments saying, how can we not get a snowstorm? And that was someone from uh, Long Island. So it's been a while, and maybe you'll get lucky this time. If this gets close enough and you get enough moisture wrapping around, you may get a little bit of snow, but we're not talking a foot of snow, just maybe a couple of inches at most with that system. That moves on by, and then the GFS continues to not indicate anything at all for uh, Monday night through Wednesday. So maybe after all, we are not going to see a big system. However, that's not to say that by Wednesday night into Thursday, we are going to need to watch this one. This something is new that has popped up in our numerical models, showing another uh, pop-up storm, potentially moderate to heavy snowfall, and then this one could bring in more significant impacts. Look how heavy this snow is moving into the northeast. Could bring an ice storm, potentially with heavy snow, strong winds, a more dynamic system moving across the area. But of course, this is far out in time. We are looking at just over seven days out of this forecast. But that would be for Wednesday night all the way through Friday and Saturday next week. Now, just like I did with the European Ensemble forecast, we're looking at the GEFS Ensemble forecast, a blend of 30 different members that run the operational model. And what they're showing us right now is there is still the potential here that there is going to be a snowstorm. Even so, the operational deterministic GFS and the operational deterministic Euro are not showing it. Our ensembles, the signal is still there that there is going to be some kind of a snowstorm over the deep south and the southeast between Monday night all the way into Tuesday and potentially into Wednesday. That moves on by, you can see it right there, all the blue. And then here comes the next system that develops. See how everything is scattered out right here? There would be that next system for Thursday morning into Friday afternoon for the Midwest and for the Northeast. So that's going to be a system we're going to need to start monitoring in future model runs to see if it becomes our next potential snowmaker for the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the Northeast. Now, one other model that I wanted to show you all is the Canadian model. This is the CMC or GEM model for short, and it is still aggressive at showing that big snowstorm developing on Monday next week. We can see what it's showing right here for Monday afternoon into Tuesday morning on the 20th and the 21st of January 2025. It is showing that snowstorm for the High Plains and then eventually for the Deep South. This has been very consistent over the last several model runs. In fact, 
Um, it's been showing this for the last three model runs. So about 24 hours worth of model data. It's been showing this over and over time and time again. And this moves into the eastern seaboard by Wednesday with maybe something reinforcement for the southeast. But this is a very different model than what the GFS and the European models are showing with that Midwest snowstorm. Whereas the Canadian is not showing anything for that area for Wednesday night into Friday morning. Now the big question on everyone's mind is how much snowfall are you going to see with these storms all the way through Wednesday? I'm just going to go this far out on the ensemble forecast. Actually, we'll go a little bit further out. We'll go out to seven days. That would take us into Wednesday night into early Thursday morning. And what this is showing us, there is a potential here for that snowstorm. Not very much snow on the ensemble, anywhere between maybe an inch to maybe a couple of inches for Texas, for Louisiana, based on the ensemble. But more significant snowfall accumulation because of that lake effect snow over Lake Michigan, Lake Ontario, Lake Huron, Lake Superior, Lake Erie, all of those lakes could get up to maybe a foot or more of snowfall over the next seven days. And then when we look at our Canadian snowfall forecast on how much snowfall are you going to see, the Canadian is being very, very bullish right now. So I'm going to use this with extra caution since our European model has downtrended and has latched a little bit more onto the GFS model. So therefore, the Canadian has to be used with caution, but it is showing still this snowstorm with potentially 6 to 12 inches of snowfall across the DFW area, northern Louisiana, southern Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and the Carolinas. In fact, the Carolinas could get anywhere between 6 to almost 12 inches of snow, whereas the Great Lakes region and the northeast over the next seven days could get up to about a foot or more of snowfall, especially up in here in northern Michigan, you might see a couple of feet of snow thanks to the lake effect snowfall accumulation. Last but not least, here's a look at our icon model, still showing the same thing on the 0Z forecast. So there are two out of four models still showing this significant snowstorm for the deep south with some ice and sleet accumulations, especially from central Texas eastward into southern Georgia. Southern Alabama, northwestern tip there of the panhandle of Florida, southern Mississippi, and Louisiana. So now, with that out of the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, folks, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and share this video with their family and friends on social media. Now, the other big concern that I am really worried about for a lot of people that live in the United States will be the extreme Arctic invasion air mass that is going to come out of Canada it is going to be moving into the lower 48 states, and we are going to see some of the coldest temperatures that you have ever seen in at least a couple of years in some of these areas. So we're going to be looking at the European model here with our wind chill index because everybody's going to be talking about the wind chill index because there's going to be a lot of wind with this Arctic invasion that's coming in. So for Friday morning, you can see wind chill values and air temperatures largely in the lower 30s to middle 20s so not really that bad at all wind chill values in indiana though could be in the single digits the extreme northeast wind chill values potentially in the negative territory but it's really going to be once we go into sunday morning and then especially monday morning is when this arctic air is really going to take full effect i mean we are talking some of the lowest wind chill values in a few years perhaps ohio it might feel like negative 20 to negative 30 degrees indiana negative 20 to negative 30 and especially up here it might feel like negative 45 to negative 60 degrees below zero that's deadly please 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 take this seriously we are talking about some of the coldest air that you have witnessed in a few years Manitoba, Saskatchewan areas, including for Quebec, Canada, negative 50 to negative 60 degree wind chills perhaps for Monday morning. So this is serious, including for the deep south down here. Man, I feel really bad for a lot of you that are watching this video down here in Louisiana. Wind chill values could be as low as the single digits perhaps, especially for Tuesday morning. Check this out. Look how cold these get. Some of these areas, 
as low as 10 degrees and even in the uh, Great Lakes region, look at negative 30, it might feel like negative 50 in Duluth in northern Minnesota. And this is not going to get any better. This is Wednesday morning. Look at the wind chill values in the Ohio Valley, in the Great Lakes, the northeast. Might feel like negative 35 to negative 40 degrees in some of these areas. So this is very dangerous. This is pretty serious. Uh, nevertheless, and this is going to continue all the way through Wednesday, all right, and or not Wednesday, through Friday, <laughs> excuse me, got my days mixed up here. So through the 24th of January, this cold air is going to be around for a while, and then maybe another Arctic outbreak potentially by the very end of next week, but that is very far out on the euro. Now, if you found this video really helpful, detailed, and informative, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell notification icon, slap the like button, and share this video with their family and friends on social media. We are literally 2,000 subscribers away from 40,000, folks. You guys are beyond awesome, well appreciated, and well respectful. So I really want to give you all a huge shout out at helping this YouTube channel grow extremely quickly since the year began. So thank you all for that. And I will be back with you more maybe this afternoon. It depends on our latest global computer models on how they trend. Otherwise, I will be back with you more Friday morning.